All right, we're back. Calc AB, notes one, page one. Here we go. We're using limit definition of the derivative to find the derivative of this function. Y is equal to one over radical two X plus one. All right, so it's really important that you be able to utilize this uh, definition. So we're finding the derivative. I'm gonna call it dy dx. And it's gonna be the limit as H approaches zero of what? So we have to do uh, the function evaluated at x plus h, so that's going to be 1 over square root of, so it's 2, and then x plus h plus 1 minus the original function. So it's usually it's f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. In this case, the function is not named f of x, so I'm avoiding saying that, but like that's what we're doing. Uh, so this would be like f of x. And then all of that is divided by h. OK, so when you do this, what you try to do is um, you focus on just the numerator. right? So we got just the numerator. We're going to focus on this and clean this up. So common the common denominator is actually easy to find here because like they're very weird things because they're in radicals. So it's just the product of those. So here, limit as h approaches 0 of, so it's radical 2x plus 1 minus radical 2 times x plus h plus 1 over. So the common denominator is radical 2x plus h plus 1 times radical 2x plus 1. Um, and then all of that is over h. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring h up into the denominator of this fraction. If you're not sure why, uh, try to work out, you know, you have a over b divided by c over d. Uh, that's not a d. I don't know what that was. You have that, and you're trying to simplify that. So a over b over c over d. That's essentially what you're doing. But really, uh, in this particular case, you kind of just have uh, a over b divided by c, right? And a over b divided by c, just a over b times c. So that's what we're dealing with. That's why the h ends up in that denominator. All right, now what do we want to do? We want to rationalize, right? I see something I can rationalize, so I'm going to try to rationalize it. I'm also going to try to conserve a little bit of space. In fact, I'm going to move this over already because I know that I'm going to need more space. All right, here we go. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom of this by the square root of 2x plus 1 plus the square root of 2, the quantity x plus h plus 1, over the same thing. So a weird form of 1 that turns out to be very useful in this particular case. And it's hard to imagine this form of 1 being useful in any other case. But in this particular case, it's going to be really useful. So this is really similar to the previous problem. So I'm going to use a tech, basically do the same thing, uh, maybe show a little less work. Maybe not. Uh, so I get the first thing squared. So that's, the, why would I not write the two? Uh, the quantity 2x plus 1. And then minus the second thing squared. So the quantity 2, quantity x plus h plus 1. And close it all over a very long denominator. So h. And then it's radical 2x plus h plus 1 radical 2x plus 1, quantity radical 2x plus 1. I can't believe this isn't long enough. Uh, radical 2 quantity x plus h plus 1. All right, let me, uh, let's try to make it right. Here we go. And we're going, wow, that's a long one. Also, because I can, I'm going to move the numerator. I know you don't really have the option of doing this, but like, since I can, I might as well. Okay, so now what do I wanna do? I would love to skip a step, but I'm not gonna do it, but I would really love to skip a step. Uh, simplify the numerator, limit as h approaches zero. All right, what do we have? We have two x plus one minus two x minus two h minus one. So two x minus two x, gone, uh, one minus one, gone. We actually just have minus 2h over this whole stupid denominator. 
we go. Two x plus h. I'm trying desperately hard to fit all this in. I just don't want to hear it from people who are like, "See, you never give us enough space." I know. Believe me, I I have recently discovered that I never give you enough space because I'm going through all the notes, and making these videos, and yeah, there's never enough space. It's really hard to get these fractions the right length too. Here. Okay, so what do we notice? We notice that the H can cancel, which is kind of the name of the game. Like, uh, I haven't talked about it uh, at all, which is definitely not enough. Um, every form of this right now is zero over zero. Every single time you try to directly evaluate it with H equals zero, you're gonna get zero over zero until this final step. So let's do it one more time. The limit as H approaches zero of negative two over, so we lose the h, and we just get radical two quantity x plus h plus one, radical two x plus one quantity, radical two x plus one plus radical, good grief, two quantity x plus h plus one, whoo! All right, now let h equal zero, and what do you get? So if h equals zero, I'm going to get, uh, the numerator is obviously negative two. The denominator, will I be able to fit this? And if not, where do I put this? I guess I'm going to just keep going down the page, which feels wrong, but I'm going to do it. Okay, h equals zero. So I get, uh, you actually get something really interesting. I think it's really interesting. So if h equals zero, then uh, this and this are exactly the same, right? If h is zero, which is what's happening. So we get radical two x plus one times radical two x plus one, which is actually just two x plus one. So those two combine to give me two x plus one. So that's where this is coming from. If h is zero, then this and this are the same. So I get radical two x plus one plus radical two x plus one, which is two of those. 2 radical 2x plus 1. Okay, so now what happens? Well, the 2s cancel, and I get negative 1 over. So I have 2x plus 1 to the first, and I have 2x plus 1 to the 1 half. So I think my final answer here is going to be, therefore, f prime of x equals negative one over the quantity two x plus one to the three halves because to the first and the half you can add the exponents i think this is my final answer that's a doozy man i don't know uh they're like you you don't do that many that are like that that's that's about as hard as they get to be honest which is good because we already conquered the hardest thing that we're going to do with limit definition like maybe maybe not but uh, that's a, a definite challenging problem. Like you may not even recall the original function up here is um, what was I using for that? I was using this weird blue color. Um, this is our original function. Yeah, that's not a highlighter. You always got to use your highlighter when you're highlighting, not your pen. Okay, this is our original function. If that's our original function, after all of the work, we get negative one over the quantity two x plus one to the three halves. Holy cow. All right, let's take a look at this next problem. So it says, uh, use one-sided limits to show that f of x equals the absolute value of two x minus three plus one is not differentiable at x equals three halves. Also sketch the graph in the space provided. So let's sketch the graph first because it's probably gonna be helpful. So when x is equal to three halves, I get one. So three halves is 1.5 and I need to get one. So I'm gonna put a point there. And then, uh, I actually, so I actually know that the slope to the left of that is gonna be negative two. Uh, but let's, let's like go through a point. If x is equal to zero, I get uh, the absolute value of negative three is three plus one is four. So let's just use that. And then if x is equal to uh, three, I should also get four because of the same distance. And then uh, let's do a line through there and a line, oof, not good. But through the magic of technology, 
uh, it becomes good. Uh, so this is our graph. And we're trying to show that, so you can like visually, you can see that the uh, derivative is not going to exist because anytime a function has a really sharp corner um, or a sharp turn, uh, the derivative is just not going to exist because there's no slope there. Like what, what would be the slope there? It's a point. Um, it's a point, not a point as in like a point in space. It's a point as in uh, if you jabbed your finger with that, it would hurt type of point. Or if this was a roller coaster, that would be your doom. You would never survive that if that is a roller coaster. So we want to use one-sided limits. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first rewrite this thing as a piecewise function. And there's a reason for that. So to do that, uh, I'm going to look at 2x minus 3. And I'm going to sign chart it. All right, so here's 3 halves. And then when x is less than 3, so if x is negative 10, for example, I get a negative. And if x is positive a million, I get a very positive number. OK, so that means that the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is going to be equal to the opposite here. So it's going to be 3 minus 2x. And then it's going to be the original here. It's going to be 2x minus 3. OK, so how does that help me? It means that I can write a piecewise function. So f of x is actually, OK, when x is less than 3 halves, I'm supposed to use this. So it's going to be that and then plus 1. So I get 4 minus 2x. And that's when x is, I'm going to say less than or equal to. Because the graph is continuous at this point, it doesn't matter where you put the equals for the 3 halves. So I chose the first branch. And then the second branch, when x is greater than uh, 3 halves, the absolute value is just 2x minus 3. But by the definition, it's 2x minus 3 and then plus 1. So that's 2x minus 2. And that's when x is greater than 3 halves. All right, so why am I doing this? I'm doing this so that I can find the, I'm going to use the limit definition of the derivative at x equals 3 halves. So I'm going to use the alternative definition. I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 3 halves from the left of f of x minus f of 3 halves. So this is where you should have reviewed the math analysis notes. There's two different uh, limit definitions that we use for the derivative. One of them is the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. The other is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So I'm going to finish this with this x minus 3 halves. OK, and I'm going to find this limit. And uh, I actually already know what this limit's going to be, right? So if I'm approaching 3 halves from the left, let's look at the graph. 3 halves from the left, what color should we use? Uh, 3 halves from the left is like this. Well, what is the slope, right? The slope is just negative 2. Like, I know that I'm going to get negative 2. So in fact, I'm just going to say that this is equal to negative 2. All right, let's do the other one. We need the limit as x approaches 3 halves from the right of f of x minus f of 3 halves over x minus 3 halves. So now you're probably wondering, and I'm also wondering, why did we do the piecewise function thing? I don't know. I just felt like doing it. Uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, um, I'll do this a second way. So uh, if we're approaching 3 halves from the right, let me just pick a color I'm not currently using. Why is that so hard? Uh, from the right to this, that's, that's super close to the other color. But what's the slope of that line? It's 2x. And we knew that. Maybe we knew that from the piecewise function. I don't know. So this is equal to 2. And then we can say, since the limit as x approaches 3 halves from the left of f of x minus f of 3 halves over x minus 3 halves, this is annoying, does not equal the limit as x approaches 3 halves from the right of f of x. So you might find yourself when you're taking calculus, and believe me, I feel your pain, you might find yourself annoyed at how much writing you need to do. That's just, that's the name of the game. I mean, you, you end up doing a ton of writing. So since this is true, uh, the limit, so I guess comma, the limit as x approaches 3 halves 
of f of x minus f of three halves over x minus three halves does not exist. Therefore, and that's the limit definition of a derivative. That means that f prime of three halves does not exist. f prime of three halves does not exist. And so what are we trying to show? That f of x is not differentiable. If you show the derivative doesn't exist, that's exactly what you did. I'm having a spacing issue, which you probably are too, because I, uh, I'm not exactly a competent leader when it comes to spacing things. Uh, let's put this here. Okay, so uh, does not exist. And so I guess uh, f of x is not differentiable at x equals three halves. So we did it, we proved it. That's, that's how you prove it. That's one-sided limits. That's, that's what we need to do. Um, an alternative approach, it's going to have the same result, but like maybe if you didn't want to do it graphically. Um, so this is a very alternative, kind of unnecessary approach, but like you do a lot of that. So let's say we did, uh, you could also have done the limit as x approaches three halves from the left of f of x minus f of three halves over x minus three halves is equal to the limit as x. So this is if you want to do the work instead of looking at the graph. If x is approaching three halves from the left, we're supposed to use the part of the uh, piecewise definition where you are to the left of three halves. So we use this. So you're going to get four minus two x minus f of three halves is just one, which you got to get from the graph or from plugging in or whatever you want, divided by x minus three halves, um, which is equal to the limit as x approaches three halves from the left of, so it's four minus one is three, so I get three minus two x over, uh, what should I do here? I'm gonna say it's two x minus three over two, two x minus three over two, which is going to be, uh, you can you complex fractions, so that two ends up in the numerator, and I'm gonna factor it out as a constant multiple, two times the limit, as x approaches three has from the left of three minus two x over two x minus three, you're still getting zero over zero. You should still do another step, as annoying as that is. Um, so this will be uh, the limit two times the limit as x approaches three has from the left of negative one, which is negative two which is exactly what we got when we did this limit way up here and did it graphically. So this is if you want to do it algebraically and then you can go through, I'm not gonna do it necessarily or at all. Uh, you can go do, through and do the limit as x approaches three halves from the right. You're just going to, when you uh, have to replace f of x with whatever f of x is, you're gonna replace that with two x minus two. And you go from there um, and you get the same results you're gonna write this little summary down here no matter what, um, at, you know, the, since the limit from the left doesn't equal limit from the right, the limit doesn't exist, which means the derivative doesn't exist, which means the function is not differentiable. Get used to it, it's a lot of writing. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna cut this here and I will come back in the next video and we will do even more. So I will see you then.